If you've been through a divorce, I'll bet that you are no stranger to regret. You might look back and wish you'd handled things differently or got into couples counseling sooner or just just worked harder to fix it while you still had the chance, right? You might even regret your decision to marry your ex in the first place. I mean, there could be all kinds of regrets that go along with the divorce experience, but whatever the flavor, it's invariable that they'll be there. And that's why today on this episode, we are exploring the many facets of divorce regret and how you can use your regrets intentionally and productively in order to build a better future. I'm so glad you're here. If this is your first time listening, welcome. I'm Dr. Lisa Marie Bobby. I'm a marriage and family therapist. I'm a licensed psychologist, et cetera, et cetera. And I am also an accidental breakup and divorce recovery expert. Um, I, you know, really my profession, I'm a marriage counselor and love doing marriage counseling, helping people repair their relationships. And as we all know, sometimes marriages can't be saved. Some marriages shouldn't be saved. And so, uh, you know, through those years of experience, it was not uncommon that sometimes marriage counseling ends with me sitting in the therapy office with one person on the couch. And now my, my role is to help that person go through the process of growth and healing in the aftermath of a relationship. Um, that taught me so much working with my clients, but also I actually needed to do a lot of work in order to be able to help my clients because there wasn't really a roadmap for therapists when I began this work. So I personally dug into a lot of research, um, biological research, actually, to to pull together um, you know ideas from many different disciplines, and that resulted in a book that I wrote. It's called Exaholics. Breaking Your Addiction to an Ex-Love, um, and it's the foundation of a lot of the work that I do in my counseling practice, growing self, particularly around heartbreak recovery. So this is a passion area for me. And one of the reasons that I wanted to uh, talk about this topic in particular on the show today, you know, regret related to divorce or or really any significant relationship ending is because it is so universal and it is also one of the key dark emotions that needs to be worked through in the stages of healing and recovery in order for you to make progress. Um, a lot of people who are working through the aftermath of a relationship will get stuck actually at many points in the healing process. But one of the, the most usual suspects for this can be feelings of regret. With a, a, a second runner up would be anger, I would say. Sometimes guilt, uh, but anger and regret are usually the, the power twins there. But um, it also might surprise you to know that feelings of regret related to divorce are just universal, whether or not you were the one who ended the marriage. Or, you know, if you were the, the person who was left, any time a cherished relationship ends, I think especially a marriage, it's always traumatic, right? It has to be grieved. And um, I think that regret is a natural part of the grieving process for reasons that we'll discuss. So anyway, today we're going to be exploring the purpose of of regret and how to use this experience in order to propel you through the growth and healing that is just fundamentally important to this process. So just to begin, I am going to float what might be a new idea. If you've listened to this podcast before, it probably won't be a new idea because I think I've talked about this in pretty much every episode, that our dark emotions, the things that are uncomfortable and that maybe aren't that much fun to feel, but things like sadness, anger, grief, pain, I mean, like our dark feelings, the ones that we would rather not have, 
are the like the keepers of the wisdom when it comes to growth and personal evolution and regret is one of those regret has a purpose even though it feels so awful to you know be in regret i mean that's just like there is pretty much no worse feeling i think than regret you know that like i can't go back what's done is done uh um if you know how to use it it can turn into a gift because it can create transformational growth like pretty much nothing else so to dive into what i'm talking about i mean divorce it can really be the end of one chapter right and if you can handle this and move through a not just healing process but a growth process in the aftermath divorce also marks the beginning of a totally new chapter and a new journey that is challenging not going to lie because it's complex there are feelings there are uncertainties but there are also so many new possibilities that oftentimes begin with reckoning with our feelings of regret. And so what am I talking about? So regret is this experience of thinking about what happened and seeing, I wish I had done these things differently. It is seeing what could have been done differently in a way that is often poignant and painful given the current circumstances. Regret is also extremely healthy because regret is in many ways your um, sense of empowerment and control coming back online. Whenever we have feelings of regret, we are saying, I had power to change the trajectory of what happened that I didn't realize I had at the time. And that's frequently true. I think we're all vastly more powerful than we give ourselves credit for and that we often feel in the moment, right? But so when we are connecting with regret, we are implicitly saying to ourselves, I could have done something differently here. And that's very, very empowering. It doesn't feel good <laughs> in the moment, right? But it is also illuminating the truth that you do have agency over your life experiences and that the actions that you take can actually influence the outcomes. So regret is a byproduct of a very healthy um, sense of empowerment to consider the alternative. Somebody who does not feel any regret or think, oh, I could have done that differently. They are a victim of whatever circumstances life has given them. So that is kind of the opposite of regret is a persistent sense of victimization. So if you had to choose between the two, I mean, you know, just saying. So what regret is pointing to, again, is your own ability to learn, grow, do things differently. And it also illuminates a number of different things related to the relationship itself. So regret might be informing you, um, you know, you could have tried harder to work on that relationship while you had the chance. Regret could also be saying, you should have seen those red flags when you were dating instead of marrying that person. And regret could also be, I think, mourning in some ways the opportunities for a different life, you know, that that weren't able to be realized. So regret can certainly be closely related to grief in that way. But for today's conversation, I think we need to talk about regret in its purest sense, which is I had opportunities that were missed because when we can conceptualize regret in that way, that's what leads to this very powerful introspection and and self-discovery. And it's when we move into that place 
understanding of regret differently, that we can really harness it and learn how to use it on our own behalf and turn it into something that's really, really productive, that it becomes a catalyst for personal growth. And so being able to make this shift really requires I think even just moving away from the mindset that mistakes exist and instead um, coaching yourself to have different language internally about the whole experience. Like I have had life experiences that have taught me things that I didn't know before. So, you know, mistakes, whatever, everybody goes through life doing the best that they can in the moment with what they know how to do. And then because of their life experiences and making contact with dark emotions, such as guilt and regret, both of which can be very healthy, that's when we learn, oh, I could do that differently. And if there's a next time, I am going to do that differently. And here's the way I'm going to develop myself so that I have the ability to do that differently, right? So it's very, very positive. When we can ask ourselves, if I had to do that over again, what would I have done instead in order to potentially create a different outcome? It allows us to begin operating in a space that helps us build a healthier future, specifically healthier relationships in the future. This is how we do the work that will help us avoid creating, you know, the same patterns in future relationships. And maybe this will take you to, you know what? I should have been better about setting boundaries or I should have worked harder to communicate my needs and be maybe more assertive, do a little less people pleasing in this because, you know, I just let things go that I really shouldn't have tolerated. And that wasn't good for me. Um, you know, maybe I was focused on the wrong things in this relationship at the expense of what really matters. And I see that now, whatever it is. But by figuring out how to embrace this experience of regret as a, a teacher rather than a tormentor, that is how we get all these really valuable insights that empowers us to make make different choices in the future. But it also creates this path for like, okay, so I wasn't really good about setting boundaries in this relationship. How can I do that differently going forward? Because, you know, just wanting to have healthier boundaries doesn't like make it magically so. There's a whole skill set that comes to being able to set healthy boundaries with other people. Like there's a lot there, but it's saying, I, I wish to do this differently in the future. And now I have my work cut out for me. How do I do this? How do I practice it? How do I develop these skills so that when I'm in a different relationship in the future, I'm going to have a different experience and I'm going to create different outcomes. But again, that begins when we can listen to regret. And so I will also say that there can be some nuances here. I think it's important to be discerning between what is healthy and productive regret this little voice that's sitting on your shoulder that's saying, you know what, like legitimately, you could have done that differently. You could have done that better. Let's work on that. We want that. That's good. It doesn't feel good, right? So whatever, you could be like, to hell with you. But we all know that it's healthy, right? Because it points to personal responsibility, empowerment, all the things we talked about. That is also different than shame it is different than a um, self-flagellation, you know, like beating yourself up or inappropriately blaming yourself for things that you really did not have any control over or that weren't your ever your responsibility in the first place. And it's important to develop some awareness and skills around how to differentiate between those two things, because while healthy regret can be extremely productive. What isn't productive and what will also keep you stuck is just kind of spiraling down into the shame-based place. I am a bad person. I'm unlovable. I'm so terrible, blah, 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 you know, and, or, or going into details of things that are, are just like, not only not true, they are destructive. Um, he cheated on me because I gained weight while I was pregnant and I should have been more attentive and, you know, all the things, like whatever. 
nobody cheated on you because you were going through a normal life experience that you deserve to have compassion and understanding and a supportive partner around. So so if you notice yourself going into a shame-based place or blaming yourself for things where other people are saying, ooh, well, that is a indication that it might be important and healthy for you to partner with a really good therapist who can protect you from some of those destructive thought patterns that might be creeping up. Um, And I say protect you because um, we all have different voices in our heads. We all have different parts of ourselves. And really, some of them are more helpful than others. And if you're being internally bullied by a very negative and hostile self-voice, I mean, part of what a good therapist will do is help you recognize that and and help protect you from that, but also help you be able to protect yourself from that. So I just wanted to say that out loud because what we're talking about today with regards to regret is not that. And it's important to create distinction. Now, going back to regret and how to use it, um, there are many ways where you can connect with this voice of regret and allow its wisdom to really speak to you and inform your future growth. So for example, even a journaling practice can be really, really helpful if you're experiencing feelings of regret to be able to say, all right, let's open up my journal for 15 or 20 minutes and I'm going to write down what is regret telling me that I should have known or should have done or should have thought about or should have handled differently. Just what, what is it? And then, you know, if I needed to do that all over again, what would I have done differently? And if I, you know, hypothetically have a chance to have a relationship again in the future, what, what do I want that to look like? And then what do I need to do in order to grow into the kind of person who is able to do the things that I aspire to? So beginning just to unpack that in a journal can be very, very helpful. Um, I'll also say that while journaling is incredibly powerful, I have a daily journaling practice. I don't know what I would do without it. Um, It is also true that when we are sort of, you know, simmering in the broth of our own stew, so to speak, we don't always um, have enough psychological distance to know what we're thinking, which sounds really weird, but trust me, it's true that there are are things that are just so... uh, they just feel so true for us. They feel so matter of fact. We don't know that they are, um, it, like it's, we don't have enough psychological distance to be able to consider them or even see them or sometimes even think about them. So for example, to be either working through a structured a heartbreak healing and recovery program that will challenge you at certain points, kind of ask you power questions, you know, like think about it this way, what comes up for you that can stimulate some thinking that can help push you into contact with things that you might not be aware of previously. Also though, I think to be um, in a relationship with a really good therapist who is courageous enough to shine a light on your blind spots and say, are you sure about that? Let's think about that a little bit differently. Tell me more. It can can really help you articulate some of those thoughts and feelings where you're able to have those aha kinds of experiential moments that can be difficult to get to on your own. So there are many different angles, you know, that you can can get to this self-awareness from. But we really do need to confront these different pieces of ourselves. And I will also say that uh, one of the reasons why it can be a very good idea to have a growth partner in this work is that while I'm a huge fan of all the dark emotions, I do also recognize and, and struggle with this you know, myself, is that by definition, our dark emotions are painful, they are uncomfortable, and I think we all have a reflexive desire to avoid them or get away from them as quickly as possible sometimes. Or uh, dark emotions can lead to like this, this overwhelmed emotional flooding kind of experience that is also not productive either. Nothing really happens when you are in that like space. So 
So then um, to be in a relationship with a really good therapist who can help drag you back into the darkness, if you're starting to intellectualize or, or minimize your feelings. I mean, I do this on like a daily basis with my clients, also with myself sometimes be like, I hear you talking yourself out of your feelings right now. I'm going to reel you back in. Yes, it does feel bad, doesn't it? Tell me more about that. That's part of what we do. It's a good thing. But also I think to create emotional safety, because I think being with a therapist, well, who will also not like let you spiral out to the point where like you can't think or like form words coherently. There's there's a lot of emotional safety and security that comes from you know being in a space with somebody who's doing that with you. You won't get get too far uh, wound wound out either. So all of those I think are really good reasons if you have a lot of regret for seeking out a structured program or a partner or ideally a structured program and a partner who can meet with you at different points in that work to say big things are coming up for you right now let's stay here instead of moving on to the next lesson because there's some experiencing that is really going to be more transformational for you than just kind of intellectualizing it and moving on to the next learning thing because you know that's that's a lot of growth and healing process it's not just informational it is experiential so to be doing that but also um you know i think too if you really want to do powerful work around regret i think that there is absolutely a place for feelings of anger towards your partner or even blame for your partner some of it may be quite legitimate but figuring out how to create a full timeline that helps you tell the story of like okay we both came into this with good intentions and here's what happened next here are the things that perhaps i am accountable for but to balance that with here are some things that my ex did that contributed to the outcomes that we had so you know how did we co-create this situation but being able to create this new narrative in a constructive way that um is helpful and that provides you with um meaning it also provides understanding and it also provides closure which can be an exceptionally important part of the healing process people will get stuck if they're not able to sooner or later arrive at closure which by the way has nothing to do with your ex or their participation in closure it's all about you and being able to create that inner narrative, which regret ties in to being able to do that. So for more on that subject, I did do a podcast a while back on the subject of how to get closure after a breakup that you might be interested in listening to, if that's something that just resonated with you. But the point of it is, is to create a different narrative that is really based on introspection and healthy accountability, where you can recognize the experiences, the illuminated growth opportunities for you. And then that turns into a trajectory for your own, not just healing, but growth process. So quick example of this. Um, not his real name, we will call him Mike, um, who I think has a very relatable and very sadly common, you know, uh, experience with not, not just the divorce, but the relational um, dynamics leading up to a divorce. His partner for a long time had been attempting to bring up issues that were painful and important to her. And for a variety of reasons in those moments, Mike, I think because he was very, um, he had a very like factual way of thinking. So he got very focused on the content. Was what she was saying true or not? Um, was it like objectively valid? And so would often like disagree or argue with like points of fact, completely missing the fact that his wife was unhappy in a lot of pain and was also, uh, you know, making meaning out of his lack of responsiveness towards her. Mike doesn't care about me. He's not willing to work on this with me. I can't communicate with him. He is persistently invalidating me. I can't be hurt. Like all the things. And that over time, it really eroded her uh, belief in the relationship, her trust in him. 
I mean, this is the way these things go. This is this is why marriages end. Um, Mike did not realize that at the time. He thought they were having a conversation about, you know, whose whose turn it was to do whatever or whatever the thing was. That is not what was actually happening. He, you know, just assumed it was a disagreement. It would blow over. It was like, ah, it's not that big of a deal. It was totally a big deal. So anyway, long story short, you know, Mike was totally blindsided when she was finally like, I'm done with you. I don't, I don't want to keep doing this with you. And he was really devastated. Um, and he went through many of, you know, the stages of grief. There was certainly that shock of withdrawal and like the grieving and the sadness and all the things. But when we were able to move him through the stages of healing and recovery to this growth phase, he was able to eventually see that there were opportunities that he literally did not recognize at the time. He took his wife as being like, you know, complaining or like bringing up things that were irrelevant, not seeing the fact that she was really trying to connect with him, that she was trying to solve problems and that it was attached to her experience of being loved by him. Mike, literally did not know that was happening in the moment. And then once he did, you know, through the work that we were doing, um, he experienced a lot of really quite profound regret because he became aware of the mistakes that he had made. Sorry, not mistakes. The moments that he had missed, that he was now learning, were actually opportunities that he could have used to strengthen that relationship. But again, he didn't know. So he connected with a lot of regret and that felt bad for him. But really, again, listening to that, that voice of regret saying, this is what you should have done differently. This is, this is where you could have, you know, created a different outcome and really listen to that. Then it turned into a catalyst for change. You know, we began working on Okay, how do I develop the understanding that I needed uh, to, to really like hear people differently to when people are telling me how they feel like to do that with more empathy, to be connecting with people on like a, a deeper and more emotionally intimate level, because like, literally what was going on with my life, I had no idea. Idea, how deep it went for her. How do I, how do I develop that skill? And so that turned into really like deep and productive work that was his to keep, you know, his relationships with his kids, with his friends, with his family, with his coworkers. He is much more connected relationally to other people. He understands other humans differently because of that. He can hear people and then also like communicate back and respond to people in just an entirely different way than he was able to prior to having had that kind of experience. And I'm very pleased to report that now he's in a, a new relationship and very happy and doing well. And that relationship is healthy and doing so well because Mike is like there in a different way that he would not have been had he not done that work and regret was the doorway. So this is the power of regret. This is how it works. So I hope that this conversation was helpful for you on a number of different levels. I think, first of all, normalizing the experience of regret. Um, any person who experiences a sense of control over their world and their environment will experience regret when they uh, go through a loss. But also, I hope that it helped you reconceptualize what this feeling means. It's shining a flashlight in the direction of growth. And um, I also hope that we talked about some ideas that will help you use this feeling constructively, whether it is your own journaling practice where you're having a productive conversation with yourself, getting involved in a structured program that can walk you through the stages of healing and recovery, including how to manage and grow through the dark emotions, including regret, but also providing direction on what to do with this in therapy or coaching. If you're in a relationship with a, a breakup recovery expert, either through Growing Self or, or if you're working with a therapist on your own. Um, yeah, because this is challenging work always. It's some of the best work, but it's not easy. 
not going to lie. And it's also really worth doing. Um, as time passes and you dig into this, you will experience yourself healing. Um, the outcome of doing this work is oftentimes compassion for yourself and for others, um, a sense of inner peace and acceptance, but also, dare I say, uh, and I say this with some trepidation because if you're in the earliest stages of this and it just feels so awful, you're probably like, don't say this to me. I do not want to hear this, but I'm going to say it anyway that the outcome of this can often be a feeling of very powerful gratitude. I can't tell you how many clients I've had over the years that have said almost verbatim, this sucked. I hated every second of this and I don't ever want to have to go through anything like this again for my whole entire life. It was the worst. And, and from where I sit today, looking back, I am so thankful that I lived through this life experience because I was transformed because of it in ways that I never would have been had I not lived through this. Like, like Mike's story, right? Think about what, where would Mike have gone if he hadn't lived through this life experience? Um, and really used it as an opportunity to learn and grow in the most powerful and transformational ways. He has gratitude for that experience. And I sincerely believe that, that you can too, if you take these potential gifts that are being offered and use them in constructive ways. So again, I hope this podcast helped provide direction on what, what to do there. And I have more for you. If you come to growingself.com, um, you can, I have a whole content collection just for you on healing after heartbreaks. There you'll find all kinds of articles on some of the subjects that we've been talking about today, a curated podcast playlist that I put together just for you. And if you are interested in getting support for working through this process, you are invited. Um, you can check out our Heal Your Broken Heart structured online breakup recovery program that you can do on your own as just a, a self-study component. It's meeting with me, little video-based sessions, and I'll be giving you assignments and journaling prompts and really providing you with a lot of the coaching that I do with my private clients to help you kind of move through each of the stages that you need to go through in order to fully heal. Um, and you can also work through this program with one of the therapists on my team that specializes in breakup recovery. So still learning and growing through the program itself, but meeting with your clinician at certain points along the way, or, or even regularly along the whole way to be, you know, talking and taking it deeper than I think an online program can take you to have that partner who can provide you with feedback and transparency and accountability to, to pull you back back in and say, no, let's not actually run away from this painful feeling. Let's stay here for a little while. Who can work with you to do some of the exercises that you'll learn about in the program? Um, I've designed it to, to ideally be a very powerful experience for you that provides the structure of the program with that in-depth like experiential work that only only one-on-one -on -one therapy and coaching can provide. So Anyway, you can learn more about that at Growing Self as well if you're interested. But thanks again for taking this time to, to visit with me today. Share this with your friends if you know anybody for whom this would be helpful. Um, and I'll see you next time on the Growing on the. <laughs> and I'll see you next time on the Love, Happiness, and Success podcast. Take care.